Thank you. 
or just in relationships in general, then that's going to be for you. It's going to be cool. Ron and I have done a lot of teaching on that together, and uh, we've got some really good stuff for you. So it's going to be a five-week. It's going to be every other, over on every other Wednesday for five of those Wednesdays, and uh, it's going to be some good stuff. Also, if you'd like to be part of our um, Easter choir, we're going to be starting our practices this Friday, so please come and talk to me after the service and give me a Stephen Helen. And Helen's not here, but... Uh, so that's going to be this Friday at 7 o'clock, and we'll meet every Friday until Easter. So you can let me know about that, please. Um, and that's it. All right, everybody. So, we're going to dismiss the kids, but before we do that, we have the beginnings of a very special presentation that um, all of the men of the church have been working on um, for some time now. So could I invite all the men of the church up front with me right here? And um, if you don't know what this is about, then if, and you're at five and you don't have to join us, that's fine, although you could if you wanted. But if all the men of the church could kind of come on forward and uh, join us up front, that'd be great. The reason that we wanted to do this before the... Um, before we discuss the case, the reason we wanted to do this um, was that um, some of the ladies who we wanted to present to us are part of the uh, children's ministry and they're helping leading it. And so I think that's five, um, five ladies. And so we're going to go ahead and present to them first. What a great looking bunch of guys. Don't you think, ladies? What do you think, man? Yeah. So yeah, we're just going to jump in and um, we want to take some presentations this morning. And so the first presentation goes out to Shade. Shade, could you come up, please? Tell them that something we like to see.
He says, thanks, babe, for sticking with me all these years, for doing many ups and downs, and for being the greatest mom to our fabulous kids. You are the reason they all turned out great, and I love you very much. Happy Valentine's Day. Love, Greg. All right, so now, children, you can be dismissed to your classes now that the, the teachers are all very happy and uh, very ready to teach you. So kids, why don't you come on up and we'll pray for you all up at the front here. Come on up, children. This is where 30% of our congregation heads up to the front right here. Praise God. We should have the kids in our church, don't we? Let's pray for them for their class this morning. Father, we thank you for our kids. God, thank you that they're a gift from you. God, thank you that they're an inheritance from you. Father, we thank you as a church family for all the wonderful children of our church. Father, equip them and bless them this morning in their classes. Father, we thank you that you're one of the teachers and give them a wonderful, fun time in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be dismissed. Inactive and unproductive. Thank God for sending you my way and making you part of my life. But I know that it is just you, Mr. Talenty, crafted, created for me to love my God and cherish. Love you, my daughter. Love you very much, my queen.
You guys get home at that clam jam thing there. I guess you're going to pull this snack in there. Awesome. <laughs> and now, probably another surprise. Um, this is for Maria. Maria, could you come on up, please? Man, who obviously couldn't be here because he's away working. But um, he wanted to say this. He said, I just want to tell my wife that although I'm not a perfect husband with a lot of failings, I'm so blessed that I have her in my life. Uh, so steadfast and so strong in her love and commitment to our marriage. I thank her for giving me four fantastic boys that she almost single-handedly raised into the young men that they are now, full of love and respect. And lastly, I want to tell her a happy Valentine's Day and that I love her very much. Love you, Anna. Now we're not quite finished our presentation. There's a few other ladies in the room. And so what we want to do is have all the men, except for Alex and Dave, I'll keep you guys back here. But uh, the rest of the men, if you guys could go to the back and stand at the back. All right, a few more presentations. As I call the name and uh, these ladies stand up, if one of you guys maybe just start in front of the line, just kind of walk, uh, work your way that way. Um, if you could just escort um, the lady to the front of the room so we can make this presentation, please, if you don't mind. And so first up, we have Ida. This is probably a surprise, Ida, could you stand? For you this Valentine's Day, daughter of mine, you have done well and I am proud. Proud of your beauty, your grace, and the way you seek to love others with my love. You are cherished and treasured by me. I make you and I'm very pleased. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. 
we had that community to come on up and both please, that'd be great. We weren't able to reach your husband, so we have Valentine's for you from y'all. We, we knew we'd get some connected ready for this part of the service, and so God doesn't forget anybody, does he? For you, this Valentine's Day, you are loved and cherished by all of us and by God. He sees you deeply and loves you intensely. His pursuit of you, your affection, your heart is beyond anything. readings that we're reading um, to some single ladies in our church. Um, the men of our church, um, we've written them um, believing God that the words of love that we're writing is for the particular person that we're calling up. And so this is from the men of our church. It's God's heart through the men of our church um, to the ladies of our church. So I think that's pretty helpful. All right. Uh, Nicole, if I can call you up, please, that'd be great. And I heard Donna say yes. Okay, <laughs> For this Valentine's Day, no one compares to you and who I meet you. I admire your beauty and grace and all that I have created doesn't compare to me. My masterpiece. Happy Valentine's Day, my brother. actually waiting uh, to be able to go to their class. 
class and if you guys that you like could you come on out we have a special presentation for you too from the heart of god and it's your birthday today happy birthday you guys <laughs> For you, this Valentine's Day, you may not care that this, but my desire for you is perfect and my plan for you are great. I can't wait for a to make you with me. I love you, companion, and I'm so glad our hearts are connected. This is what I always wanted. Happy Valentine's Day from me. <laughs> Probably, uh, probably quite a surprise. We're going to have Hannah come on up right now. And just because you happen to be singing the out service today, Hannah, come on out. This is from the heart of God for you. For you, this Valentine's Day, see what kind of love the Father has given to us. That we should be called children of God. God loves you. Not only on Valentine's Day, but always. Always. <laughs> and now we're going to have Diane come on up. Diane, can you stand?
get you one right away, just to track your giving. Also, um, at this time, if you have a connect card and you want to give us um, any updated information or new information, get your name and number down there, and we'll be sure to get in touch with you um, by email, um, just if you have any other questions about our church, and give you some more information. <coughs> God's on our side when it comes to finances. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. We've been talking a lot in our church every time. Um, we take up a lot of time. We've been talking about that, about how God's on our side financially. If you're visiting with us this morning, there's no pressure to give it all. For many of us, are giving right off the top of you know, priority in our finances is giving to the house of God and what he's doing here. And so thank you for your support. And thanks for your giving. Just while you're making up your checks and uh, all those, why don't we pray over our money, over our finances? Lord, we just thank you in Jesus' name um, for the promises that you have in your word about what um, what you have for us financially and the increase that you have. Father, we thank you for that as we prioritize you and as we give towards you and your work. God, we thank you for all the things that you do for us in return. Father, thank you for your faithfulness to us. God, thank you that even though the economy and price of oil and other news isn't good, that God, you've got good news for us. Father, we thank you so much that we serve a good God and that you're faithful in your goodness towards us. God, thank you for it. Father, this giving here this morning, Father, we dedicate it to your purposes. May it be, be multiplied uh, for your use. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving, guys. Come on up and receive that. We decided this morning that instead of um, you just listening to me preach, which is probably a good thing given the state of my voice this morning, <laughs> that we, that my wife and I would tag team speak, that we tag team preach, and, and so I'm going to invite her up here, and she's going to join me uh, for the rest of the service while we um, present um, the word of God to you this morning. Yeah. Heaven upon the earth. And you know, God has promised that. He's promised for your family, 
to be the days of heaven on the earth. And that's not even, uh, that's even in the New Testament, right? We pray it in the Lord's Prayer all the time. You know, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we want what's going on in heaven to be evident in here on the earth, right? There's a bleak and dark world out there that needs the light of Jesus and needs the love of Jesus to be here and, and uh, to show the world what it's like in heaven on earth. And so that's what we're going to do. The two things that will make your marriage great and be like the days of heaven upon the earth. That's right. The reason we want to share that this morning is that we believe that God has designed for marriage any key relationship in your life, really, but that God has designed for marriage to increase all the days of our lives, right? That there's an increase of quality in our marriage relationships that God wants. God wants us to look back after 5 or 10 or 15 or 60 some years of marriage and say, man, this marriage has gotten better and better and better over the years. That's God's plan. That's God's design. Uh, far more than it is for, for us to hit these plateaus in our married lives, you know, in our key relationships. Um, and then look back and say, you know, kind of like, why, why are we married? Why are we together? You know, why are we doing this? God's got increase for us. And you can see that in 1 Thessalonians 3.12. And it says this, and may the Lord cause you to increase and abound in love for one another. And how much more, I say, in our marriages, that we would increase and that we would abound in love towards each other. It's not the norm, is it, out there in the world? You know, falling in love and then falling out of love. The Bible says to increase and abound more and more. Imagine that over the plateaus or the, the stagnation of relationships. Imagine that it could get better for you in your marriage, and those key relationships in your life. What if it could get better um, year over year? And what we're going to share today doesn't just apply to marriage. Right? If you are not in marriage, or not ever, you know, if you have never been married, or you're not in a marriage right now, um, it's still, they still apply. So when we talk about things, think about, think about the, uh, a relationship in your life that is, um, it's very, it's a very valuable relationship. Um, it could even be like a work boss relationship. Uh, just something that you are in close contact with a lot, and that where that relationship needs to thrive. It needs to, it needs to do well. Okay, so think about that relationship as well. So before we get started, something for all the married couples. We want you to, without telling your spouse, think of a number between one and ten, where one is, you know, ten is practically heaven. And one is barely hanging on. Okay? Think about that. On a scale of 1 to 10, what is your marriage like right now? So just think about it for a minute. Don't tell anyone. <coughs> Between 1 and 10, what's your marriage like right now? And then we're going to share that later. So we're going to go get to the opportunity to share that later. So. God's message to the world is um, it's housed in how we love each other. That's what Jesus said in, uh, in John 13, 35, right? You can almost complete the verse for me, I'm sure. They will know that we are Christians by our love. Isn't that right? In 1 John, it says in 4, 8, 1 John 4, 8, it says that God is love. One of the only times in the Bible where it says God is something. God is love. And so God is housed, his message is housed in how we love each other. And I say that the world is looking to us in our marriages to show the world what his love is like. It's true for all relationships, but it's most true at home in our marriages. And yet, isn't that true that um, at home sometimes it's the hardest place to walk in that love and the hardest place to show it? And so as we go through this, think about your own marriage for sure, but also about any relationship um, that matters a great deal to you. So first up, to set the stage, what we want to do is we want to define um, two key problems that valuable relationships have. And we're just going to kind of talk through them a little bit, just kind of paint the picture of the two problems um, that, um, that relationships have. And then, of course, the two solutions that we have, and those are the two things that we believe are on our hearts for marriages. So problem number one, in a relationship, what you see in the other person, what you fell in love with at one point, drifts over time from being positive in that person. Oh, he stole this, and she stole that. To the negative, like, oh, I can definitely have this. And oh, I wish you wouldn't do that, right? And that is a natural progression without a force in the opposite direction. So that happens. We start by being enamored by who the person it is that we fall in love with, or the great boss that we have, or even the great pastors that we have. 
You know, we start by being enamored initially with who they are, but then as familiarity grows, we feel like we're the only thing in a short time we've been married to others, right? Especially as a husband and wife, you know, like, well, God has put me into my life, into your life, too. Dot, dot, dot. And so, you know, you just take some correction for me, or whatever, right? I mean, that's, that's a little bit critical of each other, but that can happen. The thing that, the thing that we want to do is we want to stay a student of ourselves instead of become a critic. And you'll be one or the other your whole life. So when you are in a relationship, you want to stay enamored with that person like you were initially. You want to remember the things that, that it was that you fell in love with. So you can continually stay in that, you know, I love you. I'm, I'm a student of you. Um, here's an example of something that happened to us. When we, when I fell in love with Rowan, part of the reason was because I was incredibly shy. And then there was like a side. I'm a, I'm a big introvert. I'm not a huge extrovert. And people who are close to me will tell you that. That I just, I like to be alone. I like to stay up late. When it's all nice and quiet. Do my stuff then. Do my best thinking then. And then, um, Rowan came along. I was, I was from a family of all of them were talkers. I had two brothers. And both my parents and all of them can talk really well. And so I became, I grew up as a really great listener. I didn't even know I wasn't a good talker until Rowan came along. And then all of a sudden he would describe to me emotions that I had that I didn't even know how to define myself. It was like, how did you even know I was feeling that? Yes, I was feeling that. You're amazing, right? And so I fell in love with that. And then he, <laughs> <laughs> the years went by and he was so proud of the fact that he would never have a wife that could say, oh yeah, he's just a strong, silent type. Because he was so in touch with his emotions and he was so in touch with my emotions, right? But what happened is that we would have these fantastic dates and then you go and talk. <laughs> <laughs> and so it wasn't for a few years, a few years into our marriage, like probably five years into our marriage, where he all of a sudden figured out, hey, he didn't talk very much. <laughs> we have a very sister, so there's only communication going one way. And so what started in the beginning and initially was I was enamored with the fact that he could talk and talk and talk and tell me how I was feeling. But after time, I thought we didn't, we didn't clue in, right? That I was starting to resent the fact that I never got to express myself because he's always doing it for me, right? And so that was something. So in the beginning, we were, yeah, I was enamored by him, but then after a while, it was like, oh, this is your short time, man. Like, get a break. Five years is a long time. I'm sorry about that, maybe. It's a long time to listen to somebody. <laughs> So that's problem number one. Very often, the things that you fall in love with have this other quality or side characteristic to them um, that you just end up resenting over time. I mean, that's a problem. We see that in our relationships, you know, not just romantic relationships, but really any relationships that over time you can see that problem number one. Problem number two is that um, in a relationship, the tendency is to have a high personal initiative at the beginning. Remember what that's like, you know, when you first start dating, when you first start that new job, when you first start that friendship. There's a lot of initiative, there's a lot of give, there's a lot of, I'm gonna do whatever I can to be whatever I can to make sure that person, I'm putting my best foot forward that that person is impressed that, you know, that they're with me or that they've hired me or that I'm their friend. Is that right? High personal initiative at the, at, up front. But then over time, that personal initiative can slip and slip and slip. Um, and you gotta believe that that's, that's a problem. To step into a relationship with high potential or high initiative up front, and then that personal relationship just begins to slip where you begin to care less and less about what you're doing and about how you're changing. It's a problem. And we bet you face it in your marriages and in your key relationships. She wants me to point out this example because it's also a negative on me. All right, so I'll point out this example in our relationship. I'm a fairly, you know, my love language, if you get the phrase of, of love languages, most of us understand that. One of my love languages is affection or is touch, you know, and so lots of hugs and holding hands and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, I always wanted to work on our marriage. I asked, I asked Mara one time, um, a number of years, probably a decade into our marriage, we've been married 21 years now, and, you know, maybe a decade into our marriage, I, I asked Mara, so Mara, on a scale of 1 to 10, how's my affection? You know, that's a top need of, of women in relationships. How's my affection? I was expecting like a, 
like an eight or a nine response, because I'm always doing stuff, always like that. And, um, and she said, oh, I don't know, maybe a four or five or something. <laughs> what? So where is this slip? You know, something that was so prevalent at the beginning, how does it slip to like a four or five just after a number of years? Probably because I never let it talk. So those two problems in the marriage, right? One is looking at the other person and seeing their shortcomings instead of believing in some of them. The other one is looking at yourself or not looking at yourself and just letting yourself slide. So we're going to talk about those two things and why relationships, often long-term ones, don't work if you're not careful. Yeah, I mean, these two problems would be the reason that um, many loved lives don't see the best that God has for them, um, that we don't live up to the potential that our relationships have, um, including the ones in this room, like these two problems would be very prevalent if we were to kind of dig in and just kind of talk a little bit about our relationships right here. So problem number one, we're seeing negatives instead of positives, and problem number two, we're not doing much to change ourselves. So let's get to solutions, all right? First up, let's talk about the problem of beginning to only see the faults and the weakness in a person. How do we tackle? How do we tackle that? Well, this is our first word. Everyone say honor. 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 honor, right? What does honor mean? Honor means to love, to esteem highly, to defer to. That's what all these things that honor means, but it, it's really wrapped up in love. And the word honor, when we honor someone, when I honor Rowan, and I honor and I esteem and I value highly the things that I fell in love with in him, that ability of his to read my mind, to, to tell me what's on my heart, and to express to him, express to me my emotions and his emotions and everyone else's in the room emotions too, probably. When I honor and I esteem that, I put him first. Right? And that reawakens, every time I do that, that reawakens my love for him and my love for that quality in him. And so instead of focusing on the fact that, well, you know what, that means that he's a talker, right? No, it means that he's a wonderful man, right? It's, it's, what, it's the same as when I first found love in him. It's no different now than it was back then. It's still the same today as it is now. Proverbs 1, 7 talks about the fear of the Lord. It's the beginning of wisdom. And the fear of the Lord is honoring the Lord, right? The fear of the Lord is honoring Him. When we fear the Lord, it means we hold Him in holy reverence and awe, right? And when we do that, when we're, you know, um, the story of David, uh, when he was bringing the ark back to Jerusalem, right? And he said, um, Uzzah, he said, he stepped out and he touched the cart. Why? Because it, it had become a familiar item, an object of worship to him. And he wasn't honoring the Lord's presence like he did in the beginning. And so for that, he was judged. But at the, at the same time, I want to honor Rowan just like I did at the beginning of my relationship. I want to honor him like that now. And so I choose to honor that quality in him. And I look at it. And I, and I will say it, actually. Whatever, whatever it means to you to honor, if you want to express it in your love language. Is everyone here familiar with the love languages? They are the ways that we learn to give and to interpret love. So to give and receive love. So there's physical touch. Quality time, all these things mean I love you if I do them, right? Physical touch, quality time, words of affirmation, um, giving gifts, and acts of service. And so if I did any one of those, if I come over to you and I clean your house, I'm saying I love you. If I come over and I write you a note, or if I sing from the beginning from the front, and I express words of affirmation, just like all of our men just did to us today, right? That's an expression of love, right? And so all of these things are expressions of love. And we naturally will tend to like a particular um, language more than the other. So, um, so yeah. So when I was talking about that, um, I forgot my train of thought. So um, when I'm honoring Ron, I will choose to honor him in the way that my love language is, and that is uh, by spending time with him, or by reaffirming it in his words, in in words to him, because that's his love language, right? So I will say to him. I love the fact that you dot 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 are great at reading my mind, are great at still great at reading my emotions even when I'm not. So yeah. See this uh, this ability to honor each other is really looking past all the behaviors that we may or may not like 
to go to the core of who that person is and to really draw that out. You know, they say that, um, you know, if you were to list 10 things at the beginning of a relationship that you really love about that person, and then you wait 10 years, then those same 10 things are gonna be things you're like, oh, I don't know if I really like that. Because of the negative um, sides of those positive qualities. Here's what to honor means. It means to look past all those behaviors and those things you might not like, to go to the core of who a person is, and to really um, draw that out and to focus on that. They say that what you focus on grows, right? It magnifies. And so to do that is to, um, is to honor, to go to the core of who a person is and to keep those traits um, front and center. So what would happen in our relationships if we made a commitment or if we made a recommitment to say, you know what? I'm not gonna try and change you. I'm not gonna try and focus on the behaviors or the things that I might not like in your life. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna honor what I first fell in love with. I'm gonna honor the core of who you are. This works wonders in marriage, but in any relationship, really, in a, in a co-worker relationship, in a boss-employee relationship with family members, to say, you know what, that annoying habit, those, those annoying things, those things that pick me off about you, I'm not gonna focus on those. I'm gonna focus on who God made you. Something that we talked about when we were talking couples, we talked about the person and the packaging. So for instance, Roman is the person, and he's a great emotional relator, right? The packaging that sometimes that is rounded out with is that he talks a lot. Do you understand that? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Right? So he is the person. The person that I fell in love with is the man who can express himself emotionally, right? But the packaging that that comes with means that I don't get to talk as much as maybe I would with any relationship with somebody else, right? So it's a different person. But that is, so we call that the person in the packaging, and we'll refer to that a little bit here. So much of what we focus on in our relationships if we're not careful, and this is the natural grip. We focus on, we speak to um, the behavior, not the core of who they are. We need to focus on the conversations that access the heart. Right, and speak right to the heart, like Mary was talking about with love languages. What we truly love and what we truly value about the other person. To really help with this, and this is a game changer for those of you in relationships if you want to switch up or change or increase. The game changer is this, to begin to answer the question that the other person is thinking. This right here can change everything in our relationships. To answer the question that the other person holds in their heart. You know, there's a big difference between males and females in this regard, between men and women. Um, men are always asking a question. Men are always asking a question, can I do it? Am I capable? Right, when the men introduce themselves to each other and say, hi, I'm so-and-so, what do you do? Right, that's what you immediately talk about, right? You talk about what you can do and what you're good at doing. And, oh, I work for so-and-so and I have this position and blah, 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 right? Or you talk about sports and what all the players could do. What about that play that this person, that so-and-so made? And did you see that? Right? And you're always talking about what you can do. When a guy walks into a room at a party, a fictitious party, he scans the room to see if he can take it in or out. Right? Is he, who, who's, who is he better than in the room? Right? It's really true. It's, it's a subconscious thing. It's not saying that you guys are all horrible and wrong and this is a terrible thing for you to do. No, this is who God created you to be. You are wired to think this way. You are you are wired to think, am I capable? And what does God say about that? We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, right? So he's, he's our strength and we can do it. That's right. And so to speak to the core of who a man is or who a guy is, um, ladies, you're using those words, right? You're speaking words that say you can do it, that I believe in you, that um, you're speaking words that say um, respect, that say competency, that say you're my hero, right? You're speaking and those words to the core of who they are. Women, on the other hand, are asking a very, very different question. They're asking the world something like this. Am I cherished? Am I loved? Am I valuable? Am I beautiful? Isn't that right, women? That's what they tell me anyway, it's not being mine. But they, they tell me that you're asking the world this question. Am I cherished, am I loved, am I beautiful, am I accepted? Isn't that right? They tell me that when a, when a woman walks into a room full of other people, full of other, full of other women, that they're scanning the room, that they're looking around kind of subconsciously or consciously or whatever to see how they measure up in terms of physical appearance or in terms of weight or in terms of other issues of acceptance. 
And so a woman is asking the world that question, the question of acceptance, the question of my church, am I beautiful? And so you and so guys, here's the key. Valentine's Day, we can talk to the core of our ladies, to the core of who they are, to honor and to build up and to focus on and esteem who they are. We're speaking to that part of them. We're ask, answering that question. So you don't say to your lady, you can do it. You say, you're beautiful. You can do it. Yeah, there you go. So when we talk about how um, the things that you fell in love with this person originally, when you fell in love with somebody and what you fell in love with originally, talk about that. Talk about to them. So when I talk to Rowan, I say, you're just so amazing at expressing my emotions, at expressing your emotions, and at talking and helping me talk things out. Thank you so much for what you've done for me. Thank you for, for helping me learn how to express myself so that I don't look like a shy person anymore. You know, so thank you for that. And I do that and I, and I couch that compliment in terms of his competency. And when he does it to me, he does it exactly the same way that I need to hear, right? And so if you take that and you focus on on their competency or on their acceptance, then that will make a huge difference. I'm kind of sharing some of my notes here a little bit, so. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a commitment to each other, couples. You might I want to employ this in the workplace or other family relationships, friends, and so forth. But couples, especially, let's make this commitment. Even just kind of solidify it in your heart so you can see the sense behind this. Have a conversation around it. You know, it's like we want to make this commitment um, to honor each other, to not focus on the behaviors that we may like or not like, but to honor who the person is and not the packaging. Now let's tackle the problem of personal initiative. Can we do that? Okay, so that was the first problem, right? The solution, the problem is that um, the problem is that we begin to look at um, behaviors instead of the core of who the person is, and we drift that way. Um, let's tackle the second problem uh, now. So we want to give you a huge principle in relationships, and if you hear nothing else except for this today, then we've done our job. In relationships, you are responsible for fixing you. I am not responsible to fix him. I'm not. His own problem, attend God. No, I'm absolutely serious. If I release him and his problems and all of his stuff and all of his mess to Jesus, I will be a much happier person. And if he does the same to me, then that's he's going to be a much happier person. And we're going to be much happier living together, right? Because I am only working and fixing myself. I know what I need to fix, and I know what I need to work on. He doesn't need to remind me, and I don't need to remind him what he already knows that God is working on in him, right? And we can be a support to them when they're doing that, but it's not our job to fix the other person. It's the only our job to fix us. In Ecclesiastes verse nine, chapter 9 and verse 10, it says, Whatever you do, do it with all your might. And Deuteronomy 30, verse 19 says, Set before, I set before you this day life and death, blessing and cursing, and I say to you, choose life, right? And that's what we're going to do. So in this, we can easily lose sight in marriage of, of just our goals in that and, and just me not focusing on me, but just be saying, you know what, Rowan, if you just listen to me, this would be fixed in your life, right? Because very often, the person that he is is complemented by the person that I am, right? And so the packaging or the behaviors that go along with that are, the, are is what I am really good at. For instance, Rowan is really good at the idea for a project and the execution of a project. He's really good at both of those. However, getting from one to the other is where he needs me. That's what I'm good at. I'm good at planning out who is needed, what, what the steps we should do it in. Okay, we should call this person, and we should have this person involved, and this is the timeline we need to do it in order to get done. And he says, great, thank you, and I'll go do it, right? He's really good at the beginning, and then we're really good at the middle. We complement each other that way, right? But that doesn't mean that I should turn around and say, oh, you're so good, you're so bad at this. Because that's what he needs me for, right? And um, he's, he's not that, he's, I should be uplifting him and saying what he is good at, what he is complimenting. You are so good, I'm going to invite you. And you're so good at implementing the procedures, that's great. So for the sake of yourselves, stop trying to fix them. Well said. So what would happen if we try to stop trying to fix each other as couples, and instead we, we recommitted to 
something which would be to, to a personal development um, issue. The question is, what do we need to change in ourselves? Here's the phrasing, to become the best version of ourselves for our spouses, for the other person in the, in the relationship that we're looking at. Uh, what needs to change? What could we develop? What could we work on to be the best version of ourselves um, for each other? Uh, this shifts our focus from something we can't do, which is change them. Because we can spend months or years or decades in a relationship wishing silently we, we could change somebody. Am I right? Or being disappointed that we can't. Or nagging or trying or reaching out or trying to correct, trying to fix something that we can't fix. So this shifts our focus from something that we can't ever do to something that we can do, which is to have personal initiative on becoming the best person that we could be um, for the person in our life. When I stopped worrying about the fact that Rowan didn't, or God didn't make Rowan like me, <laughs> things were a lot happier in our home, right? I, I would be so focused on, oh, he would say things that were like outrageous and outlandish, and he would say things that were like, he would say things just for shock value, something I would never, ever do. And so I would find myself, especially when we were early married, like, you know, having to apologize to someone, oh, that's just Rowan, or he really, really meant was this. You know, and I had to be the filter between Rowan and the rest of the world. And I was doing that, I was trying to fix them, you know? And that was a huge strength on me. I didn't like going out, I didn't like you know, hanging out with other people because I was so worried about what he was gonna say, he was gonna mess everything up, right? I so, but when I finally, <laughs> when I finally came to God and said, God, I can't do this anymore, he said, good, because you're not supposed to. <laughs> and I then looked at him and I said, you know what? That's the way God made him. God made him a man. And men do shocking things. And then they say things that are on the edge. And they do crazy things. And they don't need a filter for the rest of the world. And if the rest of the world doesn't like it, who cares, right? That's the way they are in this. They have that self-assurance that, that carries them through that a woman doesn't necessarily have. So when I stopped trying to do that, and stopped trying to make Rowan like me, and stopped trying to fix him, guess what? We were a whole lot happier. At least I was to be kind of clueless. But it means it was all right. <laughs> No, oh, it was good that he was clueless. It was really good because I just I didn't stop. That means I was able not to wreck things, but I was a lot happier. You guys, this this solution to the problem of a, of a directed personal relationship it's like it's like gold to take your eyes off the things that you can't fix in the other person, and just to work on being the best person that you can be. You know, we all have um, an ability um, to do that. And to, and to evolve and become the best complement for the other person ever. We all have that ability. I want to give you something real concrete to kind of walk away with, um, to challenge you guys on this, especially especially spouses. This is where it works best. I'm not sure what the equivalent would be in the workplace or, or a family situation or friendship. But as spouses, have you ever done this? I think we might have talked about it here before. But have you ever had a three things date? Have you ever had that? Here's, here's a three things date. It's a, it's a date. Uh, dinner out away somewhere, away from the kids. Did you ever have those dinners where you finally get away from uh, you finally get away from the kids for a while and all you talk about is kids? Okay, this is an alternative. Uh, this is an alternative to that. To, to, to plan a date where you're gonna discuss three things each. And the three things are the things that you want the other person to change. Okay? So here's how it works. You sit down and you order and then you say, you say go. Yeah, this only kind of paraphrases, they're not paraphrases a little bit, but if I am working on me, right? If I am releasing Rowan to be who he is with Jesus and to work on his own stuff, right? And he's released me to work on my own stuff with God. If I want to be the best version of myself, I also want to know when it's going to be, what's going to be easy to live with, right? What's going to be easy for him to love. If I'm going to release him and let him work on his stuff, then it would be in his best interest to come to me and say, hey, what would make it easier for you to love me? Okay? And so that's what we're talking about here. So I'm going to take the initiative of myself to fix me. And so I'm going to come to him and say, <coughs> baby sweet Kim, what would make it easier to live with me? What would make it easier to love me? Are there three things that you wish I would just change? See how she writes to me right there? Yeah. That's right. So, so here's the date where you sit down and you ask this question to the other person. For your sake, um, what are three things that I could change for you? Oh, this is amazing. Okay, so this is the opportunity for your spouse, your significant other, to say to you three things that, man, if you just change those few things, um, it would make it so much easier for them 
in life and to love you and to right this 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 is amazing so you ask that question and and you let them speak without the defenses and without the walls that would go up it was just any other evening where the, where he or she said you know what i really wish you would change right that's that's where you kind of get into trouble and it's kind of skirmishes and, and squabbles or whatever but once you're sitting down and you have it planned as a date you don't have these defenses up and you can just ask these questions just really quick all right so you exchange you come prepared and you exchange three things each that you wish the other person would change um for the person's sake and then you leave them alone you let that person with that new information, um, potentially new information, you let that person go and discover how to do that and figure out how to do that between them and God. You don't bring it up, you don't nag them about it, you don't talk with them about it over and over, you don't say, so, how's that thing going? You leave it alone until the next three things they um, no, 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 Which is usually the next year. Which is usually the next year, you know? So you can pick Valentine lunch to do this. You can pick um, anniversary date to do this. You can just kind of put it yearly in your calendar somewhere where you've got this three things date. Um, valuable, valuable information. I remember this one time that I came prepared for this date. I had three things that I just felt, you know, we've had everything on our list for each other over the years, you know? Things from like um, laundry, you know, to the way I drive. You know, we had I've been on that for a couple of years now too. Five. <laughs> <laughs> it's still on the minute ago. It's all good. We had all kinds of things on that list for each other, you know. Um, <laughs> I remember I was all prepared one time. I had three things that you know I felt like she wanted. You know, I'd be really helping if she would just change or just. Some over the years we've had like slight adjustments on that. We've had like real significant things on that list. You know, um, I came all prepared. I came so prepared that I had a list of ten things that I was pretty sure she was going to pick three things from those ten things. I have ten things written down that I was pretty sure she was going to say in her three things that she would, they would come out of that list. And um, as she began to share on her heart what she had prepared, um, it became clear that of her three things there were none of my ten that she had. Absolutely none of them. In other words, I was way off base. I was out of touch with what I thought that she wanted me to change. Isn't that something? I could have spent the whole year and saved that date, saved the seventy-five dollars. You know, I could, I could have spent, I could have spent the whole year working on a list of things that weren't even in the ballpark. Isn't that something? And so to get inside um, each other's head a little bit, just kind of figure, figure those things out, is a is a very valuable thing to do. And that's, you know, the important thing about actually communicating with each other because it's not always what you think it is. So it's um, perhaps time to recommit to these things again. We had the problem and we had the issue of falling out of love with somebody because of you see their, you see their strengths and then you see their weaknesses, right? And then we also have, you know, well, well that person, she just doesn't keep herself up anymore or, you know, like, they're just not putting in the same effort that you used to or, you know, you started to get love that was an epistle. Like Camille, no, you are the me today. It was beautiful, by the way. <laughs> but he doesn't do that anymore, right? Like, I mean, there are all these things that, but if we commit to doing these things, if we commit to, I'm going to commit to hold you in esteem and in honor. I commit to honor what I see in you and how it's for you. And I commit to increase in myself, to fix myself, to go before God and be the best version of myself for you. Right, those those two commitments are the two things that make marriage great: the commitment to personal increase and the commitment to honor each other um, for who you are and who God's made you. Those are the two things that we wanted to present to you this morning to say these will make marriage and your relationship great. Um, if you're here with your spouse this morning, go ahead and share with them uh, the rating from one to ten that you made at the beginning of our presentation. Go ahead and share that with them. What was your number over 10? Um, was it relationship? This is heaven right now. One is we're barely hanging on. Uh, go ahead and share the number. I'll give you a second to do that. If you're here with yourself this morning. <coughs> Some of you are texting me back and forth. You're sitting right there. <laughs> Guys, these commitments to honor and to increase are the fastest way to move that number upwards. The commitment to honor, the commitment to increase. Go have lunch together and talk about it. Take some of this home and talk with your spouse about it. 
figure out how you can um, filter this information into some of the key relationships in your life. Hey guys, if your number was a lot higher than your wife, that's okay. It usually is. The wife is usually more in tune with how things are going in the marriage. So listen to her. Okay, listen to the way she is, listen to what she's saying. Because she has a better accurate representation of what's going on in your marriage. Guys, we think we can do it all. You're competent, you can do it, you're capable. But the woman, she needs to know that she's valued and accepted. So, sorry. Well, we want to wrap it up this way just by praying um, a prayer of blessing over um, your love lives, over uh, marriage in our church, um, just on this Valentine's Day, just the blessing of the love of God and how that's shown into, uh, into our lives. Um, I'm going to get y'all to stand in a moment. We're going to pray. Uh, if you want to make sure that you uh, stay behind after this service uh, for, for some very special refreshments we have at the back and on our Valentine's Day, make sure you uh, stick around a little bit and visit with a few of us, get to know us. A little bit. Also, ladies, did you make sure you go to some of the men and thank them so much for what they did for us today? Because that was a huge, that was a huge thing that they did. And they did a great job. You guys all did Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> awesome. Why don't we all stand up together and let's just pray. Let's just go before God with them. Um, with our marriages, with your love life, no matter what state that's in, no matter what position you're in. Let's go ahead before God because God wants to redeem um, everything in our lives, including love. Isn't that right? So, Father, we stand before you as a church this morning. We stand before you as a group. And, Mary and I, we pray a blessing out over the marriages in our church. Let's start with the marriages. Father, we pray a blessing out over the marriages. Like your word says, God, that this could be like the days of heaven on earth. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the quality that we see in the love um, in our marriages in this church. God, thank you for that quality. But God, we pray that you would increase. God, we pray that you would increase it all the more. In the years of child rearing, in the years of empty nesting, wherever we are in that path, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for your blessing and for your increase over the marriages in the church. God, let it be like the days of heaven on the earth. We speak that out over our church in Jesus' name. Father, over singles, over those uh, waiting and hoping for love in your time and your way, Father, we just ask you today, God, for a special blessing from your heart for them. It's been spoken over them already. God, we just believe you for that, for an extra special connection. God, from the heart of who you are to them. Father, we thank you for that. God, we believe you, God, even where there's hurt, there's brokenness or disappointment. Father, maybe even grief. Father, we thank you that you come to redeem. The God, you come and you pursue us and you chase us with your love. God, we thank you for that. That you're not mad at us. That you welcome us with open arms. And that we can all enjoy your love. And live under the canopy and the blessing of your love today. Father, we thank you for it. Thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 We'll sit around and visit with us a little bit this morning. We hope that that blessed you, special service. Thank you.